Hello everyone and welcome to Marina Bay in Singapore. This is of course career mode and we've got my race after I qualified on pole last week. So first of all, apologies for the lack of videos in this last week. I will get into it a little bit further but basically I had a new PC and I've had a few issues but I will, as I said, get into that a little bit further once we get into the race. But luckily I've got a fantastic race for you so it should be very entertaining. I'm looking forward to watching it and commentating it myself. So jumping straight in then, as, as always, thrashing my teammate. Lap 7 is going to be when I'm going to pit. I'm going straight out, as I mentioned before, on pole. There you can see the Force India, the pole position with the McLaren in second. Alonso there, a few places further back, and my teammate right towards the back there, just ahead of the Marussia, so not had a good qualifying session for him. There is a chance of rain in this race. I can't remember percentages, I think it was something like 20 or 30%. So that's potentially to look forward to later in the race, but we'll see. But first of all, it's a start, so go straight to Richard Rich then, trying to minimise wheel spin, but not doing that very well, getting lots of wheel spin, using the curves, coming up to the 50 meter board, that's where I break for the first corner, but having to stay a little bit wide, so it looks like the air was inside me, but they weren't in the end, and it was all good. So, second corner then, looks like I'm miles ahead, am I? I'm sure I'll look behind in a second. Or not. I'm just concentrating on getting around these first couple of corners first. Must look behind now, there we go. Plenty then ahead of Weber. Looks like Weber's managed to get Jensen Button into the first corner. So hopefully now I can just pull away and have a comfortable win. And hopefully Alonso doesn't finish very highly since he is second in the championship and also my rival. 2.4 already to Weber then. It's been a good first lap but I need to take it easy. And make sure I'm not making any mistakes. So it's a very tight circuit. I'm very used to this track after doing the league race but it's a completely different car I'm driving. Not only is it actually a different car but it just feels completely different. Not half as much grip as the Ferrari I had in my league race on equal car settings. So it's a lot different and I rarely actually get this corner here right, I quite often do that, run it wide because as I said just not used to it, too used to doing league race practice, not quite used to doing as much practice and of course it's been a week since I drove this track, I do usually drive these track or I do drive the video the day before it goes live so in this particular video I drove it on the Friday and I'm now commentating it, it's Saturday evening now as I'm commentating it. So then, since the first lap is virtually over, we'll get into the couple of issues I've had. So as I said, I've got a new PC, I've upgraded it. I'll put the specs for those that are interested in the description. But I have upgraded my PC, it's been nearly doing for a while. I upgraded my graphics card December last year. Those subscribers that have been with me for a little while will know that I did that. So this is now running on absolute full settings. It was on max settings before, but the multi-sampling setting was on higher, so you should see less lag. But in this video, though, there might be a little bit of lag because unfortunately not only did I use MSI Afterburner to record the videos first of all I had it set way too high so I get a little bit te technical it was recording at 125 megabits per second and just to compare that one out upload a video I have it at 8.5 so 8.5 to 125 bit of a difference a bit overkill so there's a couple of times in this race that you'll see it lag so that's cool. caused one of my issues but the other issue was I went to commentate this video and then found that my new computer actually the sound quality isn't so good it is good but when I turn up high the background noise suppression is switched off so there's a lot of noise in the background my computer's fan and just various other noises so I went a bit wide there oh one touch barrier but luckily got away with it yeah, so I need the background noise suppression and when I turned it lower to be able to enable that set setting Unfortunately, there was lots of back, um, sorry, there was, it was terrible quality, like really, really bad quality, so that wasn't an option. So I've actually winded up. Right now, I'm commentating from my old computer. I've now got both set up. I've got my new computer for doing the videos, and my old computer for commentating them at the moment. So it took me a while just to work with what I've just explained out, and then come back to what I was saying about the megabits, the quality of this video. Once I set up my old computer, I then copied the raw file over, started to go and commentate it, but then it was laggy on my old computer because it just isn't good enough to be able to replay that much quality. So made a complete mess of it to be honest, but I am very glad it's all happened before Sunday in the league race, because at least I had all the video and stuff ready for this, but the league race is a bit more complicated again because there is, we have some team chat in the background that I always have to get rid of and there's a few other things as well. So I am glad it happened on this video, but as I said, you won't notice a difference in the actual video, apart from me rambling on about it for a couple of laps. Other than that, you won't notice a difference. Uh, 
um, but it has been a rather interesting couple of days for me. So apologies for that, but like I said, it will mean better quality for you guys. It'll mean that my computer is ready for F1 2013. Oh, was it run wide? Touched the barrier, but luckily still managed to not damage the front wing as weather's closing in on me. We'll get back to the race in just a second. I've got a few more things to say. And other than that, as I said, yeah, my computer will be ready for F1 2013. So it's all upgraded and ready to go. I didn't need to upgrade it. I haven't upgraded my computer for a couple of years, apart from the graphics card I did in December. So I had needed to do it for a while. So once I sort out the teething issues, we'll be all back up and running. So that's partly why I've had a lack of videos this week, because I've been doing that upgrade instead. I haven't start from scratch, reinstall everything. Even F1, so it's been a bit of a nightmare. Obviously try not to use my save game as last well, so I continue this series. It's been a bit of a week for me. But apologies for the lack of videos on my channel, but I do hope to return to normal now because obviously we did have that gap as well. There was no league race last Sunday, but there is one this Sunday. We're in Suzuka in Japan, so it should be a good one. Ooh, a long again. I'm starting to push a bit too hard, trying to get away from weather here. It's not going well. So I think that's pretty much it. That's that's been my week. It's been an interesting one, certainly. But there we go. There's that. And yep, I'm pretty sure that's it. So back to the race then, shall we? Six tenths ahead of Weber then. We'll actually touch on the PS4 in a moment. As I'm sure the vast majority of you are watching our gamers, so you'll be interested in the PS4 announcement. But I'll get onto that in a moment. So six tenths away from Weber then. Lap four of 15. And he's closed the gap mills two seconds after the first lap, but he's just slowly wheeled me in. I've made a few mistakes, but mate, it's because he's been pushing me harder and pushing a bit too hard. Oh, he's got DRS gets very close to me, but I don't defending because I know it's going to be okay. Two tenths behind me. He was running across the line. Oh, as I run wide and bounced all over the curbs. Two tenths off my previous lap though, so it's gone pretty well. Oh, apart from touching the curb there. So, it's been a bit of an interesting race so far. And he's very much close to the gap me, so I need to be a little bit careful. I still not let him pass, but he's very close behind me. So I need to push hard. I hope I can stay ahead of him. Come through the Singapore sling now. This corner is an interesting one, particularly with his four senior, as I said, I'm used to my Ferrari from the league races. Just once again, a lot of inside wheel there, so it's not been a good corner that one. Got a bit of curves there, so I can get away from Weber nicely. Looks like I pulled out a bit of a gap on him. Let's have a look. I need seven tenths down from two tenths at the end of the first sector, so it's gone pretty well. Five tenths up from my previous lap, so it's a better lap than last lap, which is good. So coming then into the third sector now. We think there's a chance Looks like I've done a bit better. Mindy tells me there's a chance of light rain in 10 minutes time, so that's not very far at all. That I should think would be around lap 10 or 11, because they're 1 minute 40 laps really around here, or 1 minute 50 actually, isn't it in the race really? Yeah, it is, look, 1 minute 46, it's just under 1 minute 50s. So yeah, around, around 10 or 11 I would say, for the rain. Maybe even a little bit earlier, that probably a bit earlier. Somewhere around there, we'll find out, I'm sure, if it does come. But it isn't so linear with the rain in this game. It could say it's going to rain and then never rain. Or it could say it's going to rain, have a little sprinkle and then stop. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. It's never a dead cert. So end of the first set then, looks like I've pulled out plenty out in weather. Have indeed 1.2 seconds. That's a whole second up than what it was on the previous lap. So I'm making less mistakes now. Just starting to get settled in now to this track. I haven't really driven this game much in the last week with my computer upgrade, so it's been an interesting one. As I said, so a bit out of practice, and it's showing. Interestingly, I saw the other day I've got 144 hours played on this game, according to Steam. So, I mean, I'm sure people have definitely got more, but considering everything, that's quite a bit. And the vast majority of my content gets uploaded to YouTube, though, so you pretty much see. Most of it, just my practice laps really don't, mainly for league races, that's the only thing I really practice for. Uh, so that's pretty much all, it doesn't get uploaded, everything else pretty much gets uploaded. So it's a lot of hours, but it's all worth it for you guys who you enjoy my videos. So, I do enjoy reading your comments, positive or negative either way, I always take it on board. If it's positive, I know I'm doing things right, if it's negative, I look to see if I can change things. I do certainly always take it on board. I read, as I said previously, I do pretty much read every single comment. I do tend to only reply to the most recent videos com comments. I don't tend to reply to the older videos anymore, as I realised that I was starting to flood my YouTube feed a little bit with all the comments. 
So I only tend to reply to the latest videos, but I do pretty much read all the comments I get, as I, as I said. And I reply to all my messages I get as well. So, I've pulled out a bit of rig up now on Weber then, 1.4 seconds. So it looks like I'm able to put away from a little bit now, with a bit more consistency, making less mistakes. So I've well, we got a bit of a lull here, I will move on to the PS4 then. So, it was announced just a few days ago. And it's the next generation of consoles. Now, I'm a PC gamer, it shouldn't mean much to me, but it really, really does. The next generation of consoles means a great deal to every gamer. Because it means... Games like this game is a perfect example. They build it really for the PS3 and the Xbox because that's the most limiting hardware. The PS3 and the Xbox, for example, have only got 512 megabytes of RAM, which is really not very very much. This game in particular and a lot of other games are struggling with that amount. And most new computers have got about 8 gigabytes, so it's a big difference. So it means a lot because that means that things, games like this game, they will design it really for consoles and see what they can do and then they'll pretty much just port it to PC since with PC you can change your settings kind of you can go low settings high settings so it means a lot I've been looking forward to it to, for years because now the consoles are seven years old well the PS3 is seven years old Xbox thinks eight, eight years old Xbox 360 so it's I mean I imagine having a seven or eight year old computer it's um it's ridiculous it's really very old fair enough because people pay a lot for their consoles getting a good life out of them but it's needed doing for quite some time so we're going to see a huge jump forward in games as we did with their announcement a few trailers they had some stop on the end of that so it's going to be a big jump forward and i've been looking forward to just just for this game a lot of things i think they'll improve as soon as this game is only on the next generation consoles i think f1 2013 which would like to be launched in september this year will be on ps3 and xbox 360 and they might port it essentially means copy and paste it <laughs> with slight improvements to the PS4 and the next Xbox which are probably going to come out this Christmas so I expect might, they might not even do that but um, I'll be very surprised if it's not on PS3 and the Xbox 360 because they just haven't had enough time to develop it really not for a yearly series but I'm pretty sure that F1 2014 will be on the next generation of consoles only they might do it to PS3 as well but I'll be surprised they will hopefully do it to only next generation which means that this year we will see a jump much like the jumps we've seen in the last few years for this F1 series possibly not a huge jump um, but I think F1 2014 will see a big big jump forward there's a lot of things I mean this game is pretty good already but a lot of things that they can improve things like the mirrors if you look in the cockpit mirrors their range is completely awful and I believe that's memory issues RAM issues and there's just a lot of other issues that just being held back really by the game and things like for PC you can download a lot of mods which I probably will do at some point in a better video just to show you what, what mods are out there you can get a, track, a HD track mod a HD tyres mod you can change all the skins so how the cars look so you can, for example you, a lot of models has now released the 2013 livery so you can get say the Salva and it's 2013 livery etc you can modify the AI there's an AI mod so you can have it so let's come to the pit set you can have it so yeah, yeah, much more aggressive, much faster. That should be a good one. You can change the tyres so that they look like the 2013 tyres. Um, there's weather mods. There's a debug mod. So when they make this game, they have a debug options in the start menu to make it rain, make it safe to come out, give it a red flag. You can enable that. So the mods are absolutely fantastic. The reason I haven't delved into that is because I know I have a lot of console, console viewers. So I don't want to upset you guys by having a no beautiful looking game. It's been heavily modded when you can't do it. So I don't think that'll appeal to the massive, to be honest. I think that'll appeal just to the few that do already mod their game. So like I said, I probably will do one video where I mod it. I'll mod the game to its max, show you what it can do, detail all the mods, tell you what I think of them, then remove more and carry on as normal. So you wouldn't see my game modded at all. Not even a tire mod. Quite a few people, particularly in the league that I race in, have done the tyre mod. So made, I think it's orange instead of a grey colour for the hardest compound of tyres. It's orange, so quite a few people have done that mod. And there we go. So, I've pitted now for a brand new set of primes. I did consider staying out a bit longer, but I decided that everyone behind me is probably going to pit anyway. So I decided to risk it, because I know I'll be very slow on the option tyres even if it's about to rain, but there's obviously no guarantee of rain. So I stayed out, but it looks like it's paid off because I'm still in the lead. My teammate's right behind me, but he hasn't pitted yet. So it looks like it's paid off 
because even if it rains now, I'll still be in the lead. But I don't bend it in the wall, of course. So, these tyres feel a lot better. I'm going to be pushing for a faster stop of the race in a moment. I didn't achieve it in the first stint with option tyres. But I'm going to achieve it on these tyres. Another thing as well, this is more like a channel update video, to be honest, than a career video at the moment. But one more thing I've just thought of is that I do want to do some sort of real Formula 1 blog. I don't know how interested you guys would be in that. I know a lot of you subscribe to my channel for this game. But I've got a lot of opinions on real Formula 1. I'm very interested in it. I invest, well, I don't invest, but I do spend a lot of time looking at the news and stuff. So I do know reasonable amounts about it. I'm no Martin Brunner or Ted Kravitz or someone like that, but um, I do know a reasonable amount about it. So I want to do a couple of videos on it. I did want to do a 2013 car launches video, but that I haven't really found time for that. And I did want to do a video per test. I did have a partnership lined up with Alex Zafro. He's also got a gaming channel with about 4,000 subscribers, which is bigger than me. But um, I decided to call that off last minute, just mainly because I didn't really have time. And I just we were going to have F1 2012 game footage in the background, which I wasn't really keen on. And I wanted it to have some sort of testing pictures but of course all the photographers that go to the tracks they want to charge for their pictures because I presume they have to pay for some sort of license to Mr Eccleston in Formula 1 management so we decided against it well I decided against it really I think he's I think he's doing it if you want to go check out his channel by all means do but as I said that was what I planned originally I think now I still don't want to do it but I think what I'm going to wind up doing is roll it into one big thing before Melbourne I'm going to do a video to sort of get you excited for the next Formula 1 season I'm going to show you all the cars, tell you how they were doing testing, so do a roundup of the season so far, really the, the well the pre-season so far rather. And then I possibly will do a blog per race. But if you could let me know what you think of all that in the comments. Let me know if you particularly care, if you want to hear my opinions or not. I've had a few comments recently saying that you like my nuggets of information that I've got about this game. I mentioned one about using curbs that you need to go all over them. Or don't touch them at all. If you touch them a little bit, you just slow yourself down. And I, someone commented saying he's loving those little nuggets of information that I give out. It's difficult for me to produce them, to be honest. I do a fast up the race there. It's difficult for me to produce them on the spot. There's a lot of those in my head. But it's difficult to just spurt them all out on one go. So you will just find them trickling out each video. You can probably get a new one every video, I should imagine. So I've got, my point is, I've got, DJ tells me like rings going, my point is I've got all those for Formula 1 as well, I don't know little facts like that, I know quite a bit about it as I said, but like I said I know Ted Kravitz and Martin Brand or someone like that, I'm no expert, but I do read the experts' opinions and their technical analysis, and I read not a lot of news about it, and I have a lot of understanding about it, so as I said, I'll finish on there now, because even I'm getting a bit of order what I'm talking about, let alone you. <laughs> probably just muted me, muted me by now and you're just watching the video on mute but as I said comment if you could on this video whether you want me to do that or not whether you'd be interested whether you'd watch it that would be great and if well and really what you want me to say as well what you'd be interested in so very much back to this race now since we're starting to see some spits of rain out on track but I'm still fastest I've gone for a rich mixture on this lap I went standard mixture on the last lap to get a fast lap of the race two tenths of up though even though I made a few mistakes the rich mixture is helping me, but I'm still pushing hard even though there's bits of rain. I want that fastest lap. I've got a feeling someone might beat it. I have 14 seconds ahead of Weber though. He's obviously had a bad pit stop. And I think I might just be faster in this phase of the race. So, coming then through the final sector. It looks like it's been pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Coming on the final corner. Ooh, just touched the curb. Didn't want to be doing that. That slows me down, as I mentioned before. I do the fast lap race just about. Two tenths up on previous. A 45.3. Now going to standard mix. Otherwise I'll run out of fuel. And now I can back off a little bit since these spots are in. There's actually not really any spots of rain in the first corner, interestingly. So the first sector is dry. But this is going to be some more rain. I'm not going to come into the pitch yet, so nowhere near ready for wet tyres this track. Let's see. Does the rain start? Probably starts around now, I should imagine. It does indeed. So there, it's really heavier than it was last lap. Definitely, you can see the tracks starting to look a little bit dark, starting to look a little bit damp. So that's a bit of a worry. I'm still pushing hard though, because usually in this game it's deceptive. It looks very wet, really, doesn't it? It looks very dark. The rain's coming down. You think you've got no speed? Actually, I probably have. 
towards oh, run wide then touch the barrel lose a bit of front wing well nearly spin it as well managed to recover it but this is incredibly wet now you see him having to take it very easy especially with that front wing damage so do I come in this lap or do I risk it for one more lap I don't want to come in a lap early because then I will burn my wet or my wet orange meter tyres up but I've mentioned it previously this is another nugget of information see I can't think of them if you watch the tyres if you can see spray coming off the tyres regardless of which type you've got on then it's time for wet tyres so see on the slicks there's a little bit of spray coming off my front tyres that means that the track is officially wet and I've got no grip if there's no spray no matter what it looks like if there's no spray it's dry you can push hard if there's a bit of spray be careful because it's wet obviously the more spray there is the more wet it is so you can see little bits of spray then come on my tyres but yeah still a little bits coming off let's see so I've not pitted this lap I've risked it then coming around for another lap it is pretty wet but it's not too wet it's manageable at the moment I think I'll just go slower on intermediates at the moment so it's not worth it but it is now raining in the first couple of corners so no spray coming off my tyres now so at the end of this lap will probably be the lap to pit for a set of wet tyres but I'm miles ahead of the competition 15 seconds still ahead of Weber so I'm not worried about that despite my mistake but that's okay so coming along straight now it does look wetter and the thing is reflections on the track need to watch out for that so watch now on the track for reflections there it is there's some reflections so I got on the brake as soon as I saw them but couldn't get it slowed down just locked the wheels there was no grip can I get stopped for the barrier I can just about big long train track saying see skid marks I made with my tyres so I'm now desperately trying to get back on the track, but there's just no grip at all. As I said, look at the reflections there. You can see the lights and the reflections. That means it's very wet. That means you really need to be careful. There's even more spray off the tyres now. Look, but there's just no grip. You can see I'm struggling. Can't get any power down. Really got to be careful now. Just watch my steering wheel. When I exit the corner, get anywhere near the throttle. It's constant corrections. It's never actually facing the right way. I'm always turning it. This looks very wet now, look. Reflection on the track, lots of spray from the tyres. When the spray starts landing on the screen, if you're on dry tyres, pit immediately. The spray starts landing on the screen, you really are in trouble. That means it's properly wet. Ooh, there's just no grip. I've done well. Oh, my teammate pulled the rest of that. It's binned in the wall, sounds like. But, yeah, just there's no grip. Look at that. Lots of spin. Who's been third? Fourth? And in fifth, we will spin all the way through fifth. Whoa, as I get another large slap of slap, snap of oversteer there. I have to break way, way early. Look at the right hand side there. My front tyres are stone cold. My rear tyres are nice and warm because I'm wheel spinning them so much. So I just started to boot it there just to see if I had any grip, but I definitely didn't. So it's absolutely soaking wet. It was the wrong choice to stay out for another lap. Definitely time for wet tyres now. I'm not sure if it's wet or inches yet. I'll decide that in a moment. I'm just busy trying to keep it out of the barrier for the moment. There. Got right up through the gears. It's, oh, it's a bit dry under the tunnel there, but almost went into the barrier. Just all over the place. I'm doing very, very well to keep on the track, to be honest. I'm not exactly taking it easy on why I'm using a lot of wheel spin. So let's I do a test now. So third, fourth, we're still going to spin fifth, sixth, seventh, still wheel spinning. I did just a bit of curves, but right up to sixth gear and even seventh and still pulling loads of wheel spin. So, tyres, what do I go for? Intermediates or wets? I go for wets. So I've risked it, and then right now, probably intermediates, I would say, but it's raining pretty hard. I would say that wets is going to be the right choice in about a lap, maybe two. So I've gone for it. Ben wasn't far behind me. Six seconds. Ooh, looks like it might even be closer now. Look at that. It's very close. So I need to be very careful on the tyres. I can't see what tyres he's on, unfortunately. I need to be very careful. I don't want to be binning it in the barrier. Now it's wet. I've got no idea where I'm in the wet. I've, I've done any practice. Did no practice in my league in the wet. Did no practice in practice for this race for the wet. So this is my first laps on a wet Singapore track. Effectively got to relearn it. And so, I've run wide, completely missed my apex then. The fourth corner, I believe it is that. Uh, yeah, the fourth corner. So, Coming to the end of the first section now, then this is where I went straight on before. Break it later than last time and still managed to get it all slowed down. So, white tyres are helping loads, but you see there's a lot of water drops on the screen now, which means it's very wet. I would say, so three seconds to the button, I'd say even now it's probably ready for wet tyres, so I've definitely made the right choice, I reckon. Unless it suddenly stops raining, but 
I reckon for now I've made the right choice. Have I? I'm on the edge of my seat, by the way. I'm sat right on the edge of my seat, leaning right forward to my screen. I don't know where you're sat. But this is this has made me what this has made me sit right close. I do enjoy watching my videos. Don't know if that's sad or not, I can't work it out, but I do enjoy watching my races back. I find it just as entertaining as you guys. Just like watching F1 on the TV. But since there's none of that at the moment, it's good to watch. So 2.8 up my previous lap then. So plenty up. And looks like Button's dropped right back from me. I think he might have gone for intermediate tyres. Look, he's right back from me. And he's dropping away load. So he was very slow in the wet, but I shouldn't imagine he's that slow. He's now 15 seconds behind me. So he's lost 10 seconds over one lap. I reckon he's gone for the intermediate tyres, which is the wrong choice. Like I said, it was the right choice at the time of pitting, which is why the AI have gone up to that. But it certainly wasn't the right choice for now. So they'll be probably coming in in this lap. We'll watch the minimap and find out. I suspect they'll be coming in this lap to pit for a set of wet tyres. We'll run wide down the final corner. Let's go across the line then. The two minutes 18.9. Wow. That's slow. That's very, very slow. So... 20 seconds, well, more or less. Well, 30 seconds, isn't it? Slower than my previous lap, my previous best lap on the slicks. I'm sure I'll improve that time though as I get used to it. Stop making as many mistakes. Start to pick up a bit of speed. His button is now in the pit, so he did indeed pick for a set of intermediate tyres. He's now have to come in for a set of the wet tyres. And look at the mini map, there's not very many cars on track at all, does it? Looks like a lot of people have been there, I reckon. 32 seconds out of button, so plenty of gap to him. Not worried at all about him really unless I bin it in the barrier, so you just need to be careful to keep out the barrier, but even if I do bin it, as long as I don't properly bin it, I can probably come in and get a new front wing, for example, and still be in the lead, so not too worried for the moment. Just taking it a little bit easier in the Singapore sling there. So I'm not taking any of the curves, am I? Really bouncing over the walls. I should be very careful of that exit, that corner there, where the join is between the track and the bridge. There's a Invisible barrier slightly, so if you run it right up against the wall there and just touch the wall there, you'll lose your front wing. I've done that before. I don't know if I've done it before in a video or not, but I've done it before. Was I run wide there? Wind up off the track. That's not good. Didn't want to be doing that. 23-3 up on my previous lap. Of course, I did pit on that previous lap, which is why my lap was so slow. So I should be on for 1 minute 50 something, I believe. I could be wrong. Was I run wide? Very nearly take the front wing off. That was close. That was incredibly close, but I am pushing hard. I want to see what sort of times I can get. I'm having fun in these wet conditions. I do like wet conditions. I do have a lot of fun in them. It's a bit more of a challenge because this game is naturally very understeery. So I do have a lot of fun. So 1 minute 56.4, so about 10 seconds there. That's a bit more like it than my best lap. 22 seconds of my previous. So 40 seconds. I'm back to Perez, interestingly, in second place. And Raikkonen in third. Alonso down in 14th, so that's good. I hope I should gain plenty of points on him, but it looks interesting. Lovely, be like Perez must have gone for a set of the full width tyres, so did Raikkonen. But the front one is didn't, so they must have been far back on the track that the AI, because the AI literally go for what tyres is best at that present time. So when Button pitted and when I pitted, it was, it was around wide there. It was, like I said before, intermediate conditions, but obviously I used a bit of human thinking and decided to go for the wet tyres but they didn't but then Perez and Raikkonen were far back enough that by the time they were coming into the pits it was ready for wet tyres so looks like look on the mini-map Perez is miles ahead of Raikkonen Raikkonen's not too far ahead of Button so that could all change but we are on the last lap now so I should think you'll need to make a mistake to have any changes but you can see Steon pushing hard now though still I never ease up really very rare that I'll ease up Unless, like so before, I'm on dry tyres on a wet track, then I might back off a little bit, but other than that, I'm usually pushing all the time there. Only two tenths. Oh, was that one really wide there? That's completely messed that lap up, but I was only two tenths down on a previous. Not so much anymore. So, looking at the minimap then, at the fight, miles back, almost half a lap back now. Miles back from me. Oh, was that one wide? And Completely go straight on into the barrier. That wasn't good. Locked my tyres and just took too much speed in. I was pushing hard, but it was the last lap anyway. I made sure I went straight on in there. Tried to slow it as much as possible. Made sure I went straight, so I only damaged my front wing. Not my. Didn't get it. 
puncture or didn't damage our tyres. We're going to have to sit down low to the final corner, right down to second gear. That's usually a fourth or fifth gear corner in the dry with a front wing. Just in a front wing and it's wet. It's a bit of lag there. It's a lag that I mentioned before. Finish first then. Across the line. It was actually, according to the results, a very easy win, but it certainly wasn't, was it? It's a very interesting race. Webb was closing me down in the first phase. And then it rained, so Button did indeed get past Reichen. Where's Reichen? He's down in seventh. Oh, he had a penalty, look. 20 second penalty. You don't often see AI getting penalty, but there we go. So Button's promoted to third place. And let's see then. Alonso was 14th and he DNF'd. So Alonso didn't finish, neither of the Ferraris finished. Paul the rest of in 17th. My teammate didn't finish either. And interesting now, I do recall from memory, not from looking there, that. We'll go back up now, look, they're in 10th place, Hakey of Lion for the Caterham, so Caterham scores a point right, on their own without me. Drivers, Drivers Championship then, the I'm now 83 points ahead of Alonso, so be surprised if I lose this now, but it's all, anything's possible. Now Caterham in 4th at 174 points, and Paul Senior in 7th with 97 points, so struggling to catch them up, aren't I? So it'll be interesting to see if I can beat them. Uh, so we see some celebrations there for my race win. Yes. I've won. One more thing I want to quickly mention. Lewis Hamilton was on Top Gear, BBC Top Gear in the UK. Check that lap out. He beat Sebastian Vettel's best time by 1.1 seconds. It was a fantastic lap. Check that out. It's probably on all over YouTube. Have a look. Anyway, that was that video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.